of Bramble Jam Podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Hallmark Classic Christmas movies. Hey, it's Panda, and I like Hallmark Classic Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark Classic Christmas movies. And, and this, this is, is the, the, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Hello, everybody! Friday, 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 Friday. Friday. This is episode number five hundred. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I think it's like episode like three seventy. I don't know. Somewhere in between three seventy and five hundred, which is still a feat. Are we counting when we do episode accounts to get to a big like number? Are we counting like introducing Wonderies the moment? No. Are we counting when we shamelessly re-release the five best from season one to try to get to a million in a year? Do we count that? Because we do a little bit no. at the beginning. No. We don't, don't count do that it. either? No, you don't count any of them. You, okay. count, you just count fresh hotness. Fresh hotness. Old and busted. New hotness. Uh, okay. Because it says we got like 372, but I feel like there's probably 10 of those. Well, a lot of those, like the one, like the moment's not there anymore and stuff like that. Yeah, it is. It shouldn't be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It got del- it got deleted when we transferred. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's probably probably if you click on it, it probably doesn't play. It's okay. probably just still right, in your, right. your 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 thing. That would explain it. I've tried playing that episode really on repeat now for <laughs> so like when we whenever you have to you know if you release an episode and then you someone asks you to edit something else out mm-hmm. and so you delete it and then you re-upload it, it the old one still shows up but oh, if wow. you click on it it doesn't play. Interesting. That really muddles the feed. It does muddle the feed. It's a big feed muddler. <laughs> feed muddler. Saw them live. Not great. How were they? Really? It was just one low, like brown noise the whole time. <laughs> Gosh, I love, I love brown noise. Yeah. I love it. It's so wild when you really stop and think about it because it's such a soothing sound. But I don't think if I heard that sound out in the wild, I'd be excited so, by or it. Or soothed. Yeah. yeah. If you're in the woods and you hear, yeah, you're I'm like, out. no, like I just, no. but brown is also not a soothing color. Yeah. And I, when wish, I see brown, I don't go, oh boy, give me a night night. I would not paint my house brown. No, I wouldn't. Mm-mm. White though. Sure. That's John's house. I, it, well, so let me back up though, because this is important. Don't though, like literally, cause you need, still need the bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you let's put back the flannel up. back on. Back You've been complaining about how hot it yeah, is. No, I got and chilly. you put this I, back on. I was right on the edge, but also oh, when glory? I'm... Uh, edge, edge, edge of the impossible. And this is what brings me back to what I need. You were burning up, complaining. I was, fl- I was so hot, but then you dropped the temp and I got a little chilly. And so now I'm at like equilibrium. <sighs> now I would that- paint my room brown, potentially. As maybe an accent wall. So today we're doing a 2017 class. We yeah. just missed, we just 2017 missed it. 2017 was such a good year, dude. The only way I'm year. in is if it has Allison Sweeney in the lead. Good news. It does? Good news, Sweeney, Sweeney, Sweeney heads. Sweeney heads. Um, Sweeney, Sweeney Christmas at Holly. <laughs> I like that one. I love that one. <laughs> uh, Christmas at Holly Lodge is the movie we're covering today, guys. Have you ever heard of it before no, today? No. Didn't we do a movie that was very close to that, like Christmas at uh, Reindeer Lodge? When he's up in the north up there because by accident. It's, it's I don't think it's Christmas to. at rain. I think it's something at reindeer something. Falls. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe reindeer falls. Um, but Christmas at Holly Lodge. Have you ever been to Holly Lodge? No. I, first time you said, no, I thought you said Holly Wild. And I was just <laughs> very good. Where are the animals going in? <laughs> yeah. It's very Whole cool. movie just out there feeding the animals. Yeah, it's so great, man. Oh boy, man, yeah. that place—that's a sad place. It, it is, is a very it's sad, sad place. place. Yeah, you know, just you don't just, think about it. You man. don't, don't, just don't go. Don't. Go. I know it's a local business. Don't go. Yeah. I've never. I've or never, if you do go, don't think about it. I've okay. never actually been. Oh gosh, I can't imagine. You never been? I've never been. I I, I, will, I only hear about. I it. refuse to. Like my, my kids would go nuts. I refuse to take them. Refuse. Absolutely not. I went once. You live there, right? <laughs> Every day I go, and I'm a season ticket holder. <laughs> <laughs> you you found it, Holly Wilde. Yeah, I did, mistaken. and I was like, "What did they do?" Oh, I asked, "Fine." <laughs> Big deal. No biggie. Hey, Christmas at Holly Lodge originally aired on December. Hey, you know how we got a lot of red clay, and it's just hot as you know what here. What if we just got a bunch of animals, put them inside a fence? They'll be fine. Make them walk around 
hope somebody in their outback will give them food. <laughs> It'd be awesome. The biggest thing, Peter, like, I'm not worried about Peter, Paul, or Mary. You just, <laughs> you just <laughs> the biggest thing they have going for them is that they don't have like a, a like a Tiger King type character running yeah, it. Yeah, if they true, did, Netflix would be rolling yes, on up. Like, what's going on yeah. here? Hey. That thing would already be shut down, and the documentary would have already been made. I'm just telling you. Yes, a hundred percent. Good gracious, man! You still never, you never watched Tiger King, did you? No. You made it through all of the all of uh, 2020 without seeing it. You're gonna have to. It's gonna be pretty hard convincing to get me to watch a a documentary. And I point point of proof. <laughs> I watched. We did a big three, and you recommended uh, um, a documentary four parter. Night Stalker. Tour. Night Stalker. I watched it because my wife loves that stuff. Boring. What? Boring. What? And you said there's a big twist in it. No twist. It's just boring. It was just bad. But when I say it was bad, it was a well made documentary. The camaraderie of the two guys that 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 were on the case in different ages. Great. I just had no interest in watching four hours of it at all. Wow. Didn't do anything for me at all. And I know that I'm in the minority there. Yeah. So Tiger King, like that's good luck. There's just no way. The last big thing like that I watched was Making a Murderer. Yeah. Um, and that was it. But that was a huge. Tiger King I mean, was, was just. Like, Tiger King was uh, nice because I felt like we all we were all looking for something to do there. Or yeah. Like because that, that came out early on in quarantine. February. Yeah. yeah, and so like we all locked down and we all said let's all watch Tiger, Tiger King, King yeah. together. And it was great. Yeah, we bonded over that. We did. It was, we as a nation collectively bonded over yeah. Tiger over Tiger King. King. Isn't that beautiful? That beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Christmas at Holly Lodge originally aired on uh, December third, twenty seventeen. Habitat? You? What do you mean habitat? <laughs> all the animals are just out there. That's a habitat. Seems okay. I don't know what are you talking about? Ecosystem? You need to go back to college. You big word freak. Don't come down here to Hollywood. <laughs> Man, people outside the upstate are loving the Hollywood bit. <laughs> They're like, give us more. Just I'm, Google Hollywood. You will come up with Google Hollywood stories, stories abundant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a day ahead of you. I'm just telling you. You know what they did do one time? They gave you these 3D glasses that you could put on during the what? Christmas lights display. And it would pop out with like 3D gingerbread men and stuff like that. It was wild. It was the one time I went, I splurged on the 3D glasses. Hey, what, if, uh, what if with all the animals, we got a bunch of bright lights? Maybe just did flash real hard <laughs> all around. Animals it. love it. <laughs> oh, you got a Texas steer? Bring it on over. <laughs> Big horns, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Put right next to that camel. Hey, Tommy. Uh, Rottweilers. You, Tommy, you ordered fireworks. Uh, is that a good idea, Tommy? <laughs> Are fireworks good for animals? Oh, you know, they, they have, some habitats have them. <laughs> Loud popping noises. You never know. You never know. You know what else? You know what else? I call my insurance guy, and I got a special policy that said as long as less than four people get bitten by a goat, I'm good. <laughs> Buy four, buy no more. That's my rule. And if they're in there, I'm good with four a year. And if they're in their own car and get bit by a goat, doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't count. Nothing. You're in your car. That's, that's right. your fault yeah. for putting your hand out the window. <laughs> we don't tell you to do it. Here's a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> We, we that's just, for you to eat. We, you thought we wanted you to give that to the goat? Hey, what if we slather every driver in honey? <laughs> Stem to stern. What if we do it? Make them stick their head out the moonroof. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Cows will love it. I love it. They'll love it. Everybody loves it. <laughs> it's not highly mild. It's highly wild. Hey, you think if we uh, wrap the animals in Christmas lights, could that be problematic? No. No. No, we good. As long as they have the 3D glasses, they won't know. <laughs> they won't know. I don't care that we've alienated everyone in the country worse than Panda did with Carowinds. This <laughs> needed to be done. <laughs> Here uh, for it. Holly Wild. Holly Wild. Holly Wild. Wild. Holly Wild. Went a little something like this. <laughs> Sophie runs Holly Lodge. <laughs> a wonderful inn. Lodge that has a lot of regulars that come every Christmas. But is that enough to keep your uh, lodge open all year? No. Uh, she's uh, she's carrying around an envelope. You know that's bad news. We meet Evan. Evan works for this investment firm that is going around trying to find properties to snatch up, and they catch wind of Holly Lodge. So he goes down there to see if Holly Lodge is worth buying up. 
Uh, he sees Sophie and he's like, hubba dubba do ya. Um, they spin. Do ya. <laughs> uh, they spin the. Uh, there the, is the Allison Sweeney. <laughs> Have another do <laughs> do the far left now. Um, they they spend the night the evening by the fire, uh, talking about how you know much they you know like to go skiing and stuff like that. The next day they go skiing. They have lots of fun. Things are happening. Uh, she discovers who he is thanks to a Google search, and this is important. You should always Google somebody that you're interested in. Um, Googled it, found out, and uh, now she's like, "Oh, he's here because he wants to try to try to try to take my property from me. That's not cool. I'm gonna make it look like this property is not worth buying. I'm gonna make everything awful." So she like makes his water get really hot or cold. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm gonna make things uh, just really bad for him. But he's not interested in that. He's interested in her. And so he gets like a horse and buggy, and they go for a nice ride. And he is still very much into her. He also discovers that they cannot build on the mountain. There's some sort of ordinance or something that makes that not possible. And so he calls up his boss. He's like, I don't think that this is what we should be seeking, going after. And his boss is like, just sounds like a good challenge to me, buddy. Um, So he commits to trying to find some sort of loophole, some sort of something that would help her keep the end. He does some serious digging, and he finds uh, that her parents had a life insurance policy that she didn't know about, and that that money is enough to pay off the mortgage for the inn, for the for the lodge. And so, not only is she going to get um, the money that money but she's also gonna like once she pays off the the lodge she's gonna get the money back that she has been paying on the lodge in with interest it's wild that's a wild bank it's like tr credit union or something good stuff there um and he says listen i'm gonna come back here every christmas and i think when it's the off season you should come with me and we should travel and see the world she's like okay they kiss and then sing joy to the world and that my friends was christmas Christmas at holly lodge we did it that's exactly right we're gonna break this movie down and so much more baby maybe no more i don't know but at least four segments. We'll we see what six happens. Minutes of Hollywood bits. Yeah, that's what we true. Have, so we got time for. Uh, it. We'll be back here on deck. The hallmark. <laughs> oh, well, Brig over there probably loves Hollywood. Oh, they season ticket holder. Yeah. How? When was the last they're time you went? They're too kind to me. They're too <laughs> kind to me because I'm there so often. They get the best concessions in the upstate. Good venison. It tastes so fresh. <laughs> that venison jerky tastes like it came straight off the vine, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Straight off the there vine. might be a reason, pal. You never know. I don't ask questions. You like to see. You kill, That's you, my rule in life. Like, I, I go into Fitzy's. I see that C rating on the front door. I don't ask questions. You don't ask questions. You, uh, you wear the 3D glasses everywhere. You oh, yeah, everywhere. Life in 3D is just better. It's like it's coming right at me. <laughs> you know, if you don't wear the glasses, life is in 3D. Well, that's right? what you think. Yeah, that's true. Have you heard about a little documentary called The Matrix? <laughs> that's not a documentary. <laughs> You're not a documentary. <laughs> God bless, Rick. <laughs> Uh, it's time for the hot take. It's part of the show where we uh, talk about what we thought about this movie. We don't hold back. I'm going to start with the good from Panda Panda. Don't hold back. Please don't oh. hold back. I, I know you've been wrestling with whether or not you should. Should I hold, hold, hold back? Should I hold back? Should I wear the flannel? Should so I wear the flannel? No? no. No, don't hold back. Don't hold back. How about flannel? I, I don't know how you're wearing flannel right now. It's burning up in here, but you do you. I, I feel comfy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I get why people like this movie. Uh there's two charming leads in it. You have a lodge that's adorable. It ends on an incredibly happy note. I mean, she not only keeps the lodge, but she ends up getting money retroactively with interest. Yes. A lot of money. Uh, and uh, there's they just chalk full uh, all the Christmas in it. They just throw in all the all the stops there, and I love it. Uh, they throw in all the stops. All of them. Stop. And then there's another stop, and there's not, there's just there so many stops. So many stops. Uh, that said, here's where I'm at on this movie. I, it's fine. 
Like, I think that's the problem. Like, it, it it's not exceptional. Uh, it, it's pretty middle of the pack overall. Um, yeah, like, I, I just, I don't know if it was... It, there's nothing in this movie that's going to stand out to me later, if I'm going to, if I would say that. There's nothing exceptional that this movie does. But I understand why people really like it. It's a charming movie. If this was on uh, during the Christmas season, I would leave it on. And it would be classic filler background noise. There's there's no, there's no performance here that requires more attention. There's no nuance. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, we have some really shocking developments when th the one thing that will stand out, we'll talk about is the soundtrack to this movie. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Welcome to Holly Lodge. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't watch a lot of the mysteries. And so I always feel like I don't get enough Allison Sweeney yeah. because she does the mysteries. And so, you know, when I saw Good Morning Christmas this last holiday season. With your boy, Lucas. <laughs> big Lucas, Lucas boy. Gosh, I love Lucas. Big Lucas boy. I like Allison Sweeney a lot. And I really like this movie. It gives me Christmas feels. I love The Lodge. I will, my only... My criticism about this movie is the pacing is just weird. It's a weird paced movie where it just, it feels like we get to her finding out who he is really fast. And then it's a very long time of her not like not wanting to like him. I don't know. It just felt like a he weird. He starts putting the moves on almost scene really one. quick, really, really quick. quick. Yeah. It just, the, the pacing of the movie felt a little weird, but the characters love them. The lodge loved them. Um, it's just the pacing is a little bit wonky, but I love Allison Sweeney and I wish that she was in more, uh, standard movies. Um, but you know, between days of our life and the mystery series, days of our life, singular, just one life, a lot of days. I don't know. I think Matrix, I'm telling you. <laughs> if you think about, um, uh, yeah. So I just wish she was in more, more, more of the movies. Cause yeah. I it just don't, I don't get them enough. I would say that context has to play a factor with this movie, which we've talked about before. If you're watching this on a Saturday night during Christmas season, um, I think you're probably pretty happy. I personally would, it still wouldn't make my top half, but I think for most people, this is what they're looking for. You're watching this uh, mid-morning weekday in April. It's a tough sled. It's it's a dumpster fire. I, I, I don't I don't I don't know how to reconcile those two things. Uh, the movie makes very little sense. Um, the two leads are great, but I feel like they're in different movies. Like there's three movies going on: Christmas, Holly Lodge, whatever movie Allison Sweeney's in, whatever movie this guy's in. Um, I, I don't know. It didn't really do anything for me. It didn't it didn't charm me. It didn't work for me, and I just didn't like it. Not very good. Not, but to your point, it's not an enthusiastic hatred, and it's not a yeah, this was good. It's just a pretty standard bad situation. Santa Christmas, I, I, yeah, I I will not but, likely remember. I, mean, I think if we watch this, like if we're here on if we're here during Christmas time, what did you you, say? you 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 trailed off for a long time? Yeah, I just I don't think I will remember much of this movie. That's what I was saying. Yes. So if we're watching this during the Christmas season, yeah, we would like this, and movie it's like a lot. December second, and we just watched the Christmas Ring. And then you throw this bad boy on. Yes. You're, yes. you're, this is, I, I have, you're flying high. I, yes. I've seen this movie during the holiday season. So yeah. I do know what it, what it brings yeah. to and the table for me. It's yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Context drastically impacts your take on this movie. Whereas like a movie like Love at the Christmas Table, which you didn't get to see, right. unfortunately, that movie just works. Like it just works. Doesn't matter. 12 months a year, that movie works. So, you know, it can't, you can make a Christmas movie that you can watch now for me. This just isn't it. What about Candy O'Reilly's uh, Christmas flick? Candy O'Reilly, she, she can do no wrong. No wrong. Yeah. Everything I, she does is great. I didn't like it. Wow. That's hot. It's a hot take. It's time for all the feels part of the show. We talk about what, and this movie gave us feels. Panda? How about some cozy lodge feels? How when about they're them? sitting there right by the fireplace, that fire's crackling. There's some light Christmas music playing in the background. Some light as, as supposed to like full the strength. Heavy, it's not, they're not going heavy on the not Christmas heavy. music. It's just okay. a light. There's not a light. like a uh, project 86 is Christmas. Album. No, gosh, too much. <laughs> too much. Uh, I yeah. played it one time. Just ears started to bleed. It was too yeah. much. Uh, but this, this was great. Uh, love the lodge. Very charming setup. Uh, that That's where I'm at. You know, August Burns Red has a great instrumental yeah. Christmas album. Really? Uh, it's very, very heavy, hard. but it's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I keep going back to the Allison Sweeney bit here, but 
she had like this childlike wonder in this movie that gave me feels like her love of this uh, lodge and her love of Christmas came through in this movie in a lot of different uh, scenes. Um, and I, she just kept giving me feels like just seeing her enjoying Christmas and enjoying the logic gave me feels. Um, and it made me be like, it made me be rooting for her. It made me it root made me for, her. for her. <laughs> it made me be rooting for her. <laughs> it made me root for her. Um, you know, uh, how it all uh, ended up happening. That's another question, but I was rooting for her. Yeah. I, I think that her having a childlike wonder in her position is completely unearned, which is a different story for a different day. There was something about, his pursuit of her that worked for me. Like, in most of these movies, the guy gets there and he's a stuffed shirt, arrogant dude, and then the town or the girl wins him over and he starts to realize, I got a quandary on my hand because I'm supposed to shut this place down. This guy shows up to shut it down, looks her in the eyes, and from that point forward, he's looking for every reason not to. The business is on the (laughs) back burner and he's just like, how do I get to spend more time with her? That is unusual for these movies and it wasn't explained well, but it worked for me. It worked that he just, uh, his life had been changed. He just was like, I got to find a way to spend more time with this girl ASAP, whatever with the business. This is what I got to do. That worked for me. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Amen. Okay. Bada, bada, bada. Uh, we'll be right back after this break with the wait, what the, what the hallmark. And I did hear through the grapevine. We have one heck of a double decker of the week. Today. Wow. Yeah, oh, it's, it's fire. Teach in ancient Rome. <laughs> we'll see. That. Got Rome on my cell signal. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now you can't even use it. I'm sorry. That way you wasted it. Let's get back, guys. Let's get back to it. We're talking about Holly Lodge. It's time for the wait. What is the part of the show we talk about? What in this movie made us go away? What? And I will start with my friend Panda, the Wizard of Wait What's. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you called me that. Oh, That's a new nickname I've been wizard? testing out. I actually bought a jersey uh, that just says Wizard of Wait What's. That's a long That's a lot. jersey. Yeah, a lot. I spent a lot on so it. Basketball, uh, baseball, hockey, what is it? Uh, uh, rugby. Rugby, interesting. Big rugby fan. <laughs> Big rugby. Big rugby guy. Big rugby yeah. guy. Uh, during the snowball fight, I, I really only have two. First of all, during the snowball fight, they're, they're, everyone joins in. They're all throwing the snowballs back and forth. And my man, uh, Evan, does an odd play here. And yep. That's the only way I can describe it. Yep. He runs and essentially runs into her. No one's doing that. Yep. I mean, they are- Everyone's feet are planted firmly, firmly on the, on the ground. ground. And he, he throws a couple of snowballs. One launches it, you know, <laughs> mad, yeah. Oh, like he misses by a mile. Her. Not but even close. goes and tackles her. That's right. Like, that's the only way I know how to d- describe it. And you can't even play that one off as an accent. Like, whoops. Like, guys, it's not romantic. <laughs> that, that you get tackled. What the heck? Yeah. What happened? Yeah, that scene is bonkers. It has the most people I think I've ever seen in a snowball fight in a Hallmark movie. He picks up one snowball and he just full Joe Montana's that thing. I mean, it's 50 yards yeah. past everybody. And then he just runs and tackles her. It doesn't make any sense I, at all. It doesn't make any sense at all. I, I don't know what they were aiming for there. It's really weird. Uh, the only other thing here, and guys, I, I pointed out, the soundtrack has an uncanny resemblance to the Jurassic Park theme song. Da, na, 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 na. It's one more I, note. Everything else is the exact same. It, and it's the first Jurassic time I heard Park. it, I sat there and went, da, na, na, na. I was like, I've heard this song. And then all of a sudden, I, I was like, it kind of sounds like Jurassic Park. Yeah. You can't unhear it. You if you go back and watch this movie, once you hear it, it's everywhere. You cannot unhear it, and it comes back na, 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 almost every other scene. Na, 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 na. Every time. It's Dun. wild, man. That one extra note keeps it from being a copy. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. <laughs> That's what does it. That one extra note. I, every single time, though, like my heart starts pounding a little bit because I'm like, dinosaurs. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so pumped. They're coming. And they're coming. But then you never get them. He no. was throwing that snowball at the brontosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Get him. Was that a brontosaurus? That was a brontosaurus. Interesting. Yeah. Because brontosaurus, they have all four feet on the ground. Right, but this they don't guy, have got, this, he got spooked. This, but he got spooked. He so get he up, rises on, his up on his hind legs. It's a spooky and brawny. Went, <laughs> okay. It was a it. spooked brawny. Yeah, spooked brawny. You, you, don't don't you don't want any part of that. Uh, I have a couple. One, he's on the phone with his boss, and his boss is what I can only assume 
is talking to him somehow through an AM radio. It is it like somebody is slowly changing the dial while he's talking. Yeah. It's not like the phone is cutting in and out. It's just like but what is his boss anyway? And uh, what is what are you? I don't he's know. Different, he's from a different he's, era. He is from a different era. I just I <laughs> um, the, the guys, I gotta say, the Lodge Christmas tree is one of the worst Christmas trees I've oh, seen in a Hallmark movie. Bad. It is so scarce at the top. I just don't know why how it happened. How did they let this beautiful Christmassy lodge have such a bad tree? And last but not least, I I don't know why this movie ended with a kiss followed by Joy to the World. I don't for the uh, life of me. What was it about this it's kiss? Cheryl Lee Ralph's contract. What was it about this kiss that made her sing, you know what? I'm going to sing it about and the coming of the, the Lord. It first time through as a solo. Yeah. And then she start, invites everybody else to sing it and, and then, gets crazy with her runs. Yeah. She goes all over the place. Cheryl Lee, we want you to do nothing all movie long, okay? But I get to sing Joy to the World at the end, first verse solo. Okay, deal. Boy, that is a good kiss. Joy to the, the world. world. The Lord is coming. Like, yeah. why, what about that was like, I want to sing about the coming Messiah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Every heart needs to prepare more. It's like when you start Amen. dancing to Silent Night. Yeah, that happens a lot. So been there. Will. I've been there. Dana? Yeah. Um, she, at one point in the movie, when she realizes who he is, she decides that she's going to start doing things to make the lodge less appetizing for him. And I do want to point out that everything she does is a very easy fix and would not keep a, a, a anyone from buying it at all. Like, the pipes knock in my room. Okay. We'll fix we'll fix the pipes. The ski lift is is down. Okay, we'll fix fix the ski lift. Nothing she's doing would have any bearing on someone making a purchase of that caliber. It is a waste of time and effort of epic proportions by her. It doesn't matter. If he's here to buy it, he's going to buy it. Pipes be damned. He's going to buy it. It doesn't sure. matter. Um next they go to chop a tree down and they have an axe <laughs> and he starts going to town on this tree of the axe. They're like, stop. We got the chainsaw for, for the tree. And then they say this line, the axe is for the lower branches to trim. Why? You have a chainsaw. May I suggest doing what every Christmas tree lot in the world does, cut the tree down with the chainsaw, and then trim the lower branches with the chainsaw. It will save you an infinite amount of time not to chop branches off with an axe when you have a chainsaw present. You know, is it because of precision cut? You can't get precision cut? You think that that (laughs) an axe is more precise than a chainsaw? Well, it's like a close shaver. Get out of here. You can get close shaver, right? (laughs) Just keep going. I'm just going to let you go. Keep going. Axe is more precise than a chainsaw. Go. Handheld chainsaw. Bang. No, no, no. (laughs) Okay. No, but you see what I'm saying? Like you could get real close you with could the get axe. closer with the you can't axe get, blade. Then you can with a chain. Motor, the, motor, right the motor gets the fat motor's in the back here. and you can't get like What how are you cutting this tree? Are you stand are you straddling the tree? Is it laid on top no, of I'm you? I'm just I'm trying like you're trying I can see. Okay. I'm just I'm let me envision myself there for a second. I'd prefer that you stand by it personally. No, I think I, I think I do. I think you have to because I do see where that you come with the axe. The axe gives you yeah. a cleaner cut. Um, no, it doesn't. It, no, you said more precise. There's more precision, and, and, that's and more precision. Both. It I'll stand by them. It both. doesn't. It doesn't do those, those things. Axe um, double down. Uh, am I to understand? There's a separate hot water line to every room in this establishment. Boy, that is. Not well you know, thought out. That's I, I just assumed that that's how lodges but, work. But also, because they only turned his hot water off, not everyone. Somehow they just turned his off. That's impressive. Yeah, she does a one, a one nozzle, and they each two, have numbers on them. But the thing is, is, it says 9 to 12, and there's only two lines. So I think that they're sharing a line. Oh. 9, 10 here, 11, 12 here. So whomever is in 11 is getting... I'm sure no she gave sleep. him the heads, the heads no up. No sleep and banging on the thing right. all night. I guess. I'm assuming um, no one was there. Yeah. Um, 
Dude yeah. comes in and asks and asks for a one ask Art, who we didn't talk about at all, who's a character, Art for a one horse open sleigh, and Art, who's just done several lines of drugs, uh, <laughs> decides ah. this is his time to do a full twelve days of Christmas bit. But a one horse open sleigh is not in the twelve days of Christmas. It's not. I don't know why you launched it shouldn't into be, that. Though, arc. It's a way better option than <laughs> a lot of the other. It's true. Um, thank goodness that big time business boy has an unprotected MacBook Pro that does not require a password of any kind for Allison Sweeney. And then, can we determine if this place has cell signal or not? Because Art clearly states you usually you, you cell phone signal goes out by mile seven or twelve or something. Yet people throughout this movie make cell phone calls. All the time, you lo- you 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 lose it coming in, but you gain, you it, gain it once com- you're there. Once you're there, it's fair enough. It's a losing game. Um, really, I, yeah. I need someone to explain to me the advent calendar and what its purpose was in this movie. The, pay the <laughs> pay the cam, guys. Yeah, before you tell this terrible story, I they show close ups of two chimneys or little houses at a time with numbers on them, and they open one. There's a picture inside, and then they just go back to the story, and the numbers are never in sequential order, and they're different. One time it says 17 and 23, then one time it says 20 and 23. And I don't, I don't know what they're, what the, what, 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 that's a huge weight what for me. Can you, can you clear that yeah, up? Yeah, Dan, uh, this year, uh, past year, yeah. I uh, purchased a advent calendar for my dear daughter that was a Hershey Kisses one. So every single one you open, you okay. pop it open, uh, uh, Hershey Kisses right so there, far, yeah. right? None of the numbers in sequential order. But did they ever move? Because one time we see seventeen next to twenty. But maybe it was a house where you could like it, it was a house like. But if if I if you see two and one says seventeen, one says twenty three, and then the next time it says twenty and twenty three, how did that happen? How can twenty and seventeen be the same house? Different windows. Different. Windows. They're next to each other. Twenty three is right here. This can and either so you're be saying 17, 17 swapped out to 20. That's right. Maybe it's like a Rubik's Cube. Uh, and you just keep calendar. spinning it. You keep yeah. spinning until like you get MC, all of them MC in order. Asher advent calendar. Boy, I would love that. Lastly, I saw them live. <laughs> Crazy. Um, lastly, uh, I just want to get this straight. Her parents took out a life insurance policy that upon their death would pay for the end, but did not tell their daughter that they did it. What? Yes. So they died, and they just went, when we got this policy, what if we die and we don't have a chance to tell her? Oh, she'll just keep making payments. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, it wasn't the best, but... <laughs> I would say so. They yeah. fed, you know. Do you think it was one of those situations where they just didn't get chance to? Like, they had purchased it that one day, and No, then... that thing was old, old. That I love that, he, like, the only reason it was found is because he broke into her files at the bank somehow <laughs> that's also shady no, shady it's not great we've all been there we've all been uh there. it's time for what the hallmark is the part of the show we wonder what could have been maybe having get some clarity of the questions that we still have panda what you got pal uh let's see i don't know uh, <laughs> uh calm down how, here, I, I do how does she so multiple times throughout this movie she sits there and she says uh i don't know how he's finding out all this information about me and then she hops on her computer and she goes, I'm going to find out what he knows about me. And she Googles something and then she's like, he knows all this stuff about me. How does she figure that out? It sounds what she like Googles? you only kind of watched the movie. <laughs> I don't know. But what you're saying doesn't ring a bell. Like she Googled, right? Like she's looking, she says multiple times, she's like, I don't know how he knows all this stuff about, like she keeps assuming he knows all this stuff what about stuff? their financial situation within the lodge. She keeps assuming he knows all this stuff. Well, that is kind of, you're kind of in the ballpark of a thing, which is my what the hallmark, which is you're not allowed to go and see if someone's up to date on their mortgage payment or not. Which is, no, but she says he knows all this stuff and she yeah, Googles it I, at some point, that, which is like. That I don't know, but he goes straight to the bank and he says, hey, tell me about this girl's mortgage. And they say, she's behind on her payments. You can't do that. You can, it's public record how much things are bought. You can look how much I bought my house for online. Right. It's easy to find. You cannot look to see what my monthly payment is, what interest rate I got, or how much I've paid on the house or how much I'm behind or ahead on it. You can't look at that stuff. And he goes into the bank and they're like, yes, yeah, she's behind on her payments. And what kind of bank's doing that? And then can they I give, access then they like your him, computer webcams? Then they give him, I hope not, then they give him all of the records. 
And he digs through, and that's how he finds a life insurance policy. That's really bad banking. Illegal, even. Real bad. Yeah, no, that's not great. Can I turn your TV channels? I hope not. Mm. You got anything, Brian? Because I just went. Yeah, well, if you see someone turning your TV channels, it's not me. Got it. Um, The little girl only gives herself a six on the nice scale. 6.5 tops. And I, what, what is she, what's she up to? That's a big dropage. Maybe she's doing it to underplay herself. Maybe. To Santa. Maybe. Does 6.5 get you can't, uh, a toy? I, I would assume it's, it's, 6. it's 5. a toy. Yes. That's toys. I would assume it's toys. Yeah. Not a lot of toys. Safely Not a lot in of the toys. toys. Yes. I think five, five, under five. I would say it gets you $30 in below gifts. Like maybe three. But think about, like how, close, stuff think about how close yeah. she is, though, to coal. In this scenario, like, well, are we saying five is coal? I five think, and below? I think five and below is coal. Four point nine is coal. Five is toys. Okay. You so mean the, to I, tell me the further to ten you are, the better the toys you get? Yes. Yeah, the more toys. Interesting. Me. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I I I would say that there's a, a sliding scale there. Yeah. Sliding scale. Yeah. Um, we did, everybody. Congratulations. Yay. We will leave you with a double decker of the week. I've been waiting for this one, Panda. Who who do we have today, Dan? Lisa McCauley. Lisa, oh, yeah, you Lisa were telling McCauley. me, man, Lisa's yeah. got quite the story. Who, what, what's Lisa up to? Yeah, hey, Lisa started a company, Brand. Uh, really excited about it. It's called Can't Put It Down. <laughs> Can't Put, it, Can't put down. it Down. Yeah, very okay. exciting. What, what's the Is point of the company? Is it a store, like a, a, a brick and mortar, like you walk yeah, into? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You could go in there. It's a great experience all the way through, Dan. And you pick something up, and once you do, you're not allowed to put no, it down? No, no, that's ridiculous. Don't be stupid about that, okay. Dan. Yeah, uh, sorry. The, very clearly, it's uh, it's an anti-gravity store, Dan. Okay. You go in, you get a f- fun experience. You could go bounce around on the little bouncy things. It's what is super the great. it? You, yourself, Dan. You can't put yourself down. It's anti-gravity in there. You never put yourself down. I'm, I'm down right like now. Insulting. Dan, you're down right now. We're sitting down. Yeah, it you're down. It refers to an object. What is the it? I don't think you're, I think you're overthinking think that. Overthinking. Clearly, the name is great. I think you're overthinking. Yeah. Well, well, because yes, of course you can't put yourself down, but like anything you grab in there also. Yeah, it also, it all Is floats. there stuff floating around? There with is. It? Dan, it's anti-gravity. Everything. Everything's floating, Dan. What are you, what, what else are is you in there? listening? I'm sorry. You no, don't no, no. even, you clearly, clearly don't even it's understand. It's Friday. It's been a long week. Sorry that can't I don't understand that. Can't put it down. That. You can't put it down. Can't put it down. It, of course, implies that there are things. Yes. Multiple can things. Can you buy those things? But uh, yeah, he said that it refers to yourself. Oh, but you're one of the things that's He floating. is one of the things. You are. And at that <laughs> you point, are. you're you in it. You are an object I, in the I What are you? I don't understand the business. You guys don't understand pronouns, I don't think. I think I understand just fine. And you would not even float, probably, because yeah. your negativity is bringing everything down. Okay, fair enough. Am I right? Nailed it. Good high We five, did it, everybody. We're going to be back on Monday with another movie. Alonzo will be here. On the side by side, uh, we can't wait for that. And um, next week, uh, is there a movie? Yes, yeah, there's one it's more. The chef. Can't buy me love. I don't know. What it is. Can't <laughs> buy me love. Uh, but we will Picture be there to, re- to review Anderson it. Is what we're reviewing oh. next week. Uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Neck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live, and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. For more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free, you can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.